five different ways to export data from Power BI. Let's go. So before you export data, ask, do you really need to? What's the purpose? Why are you exporting it? Because you're making essentially, potentially copies and you lose that single source of truth. So resolve that first, that this is a requirement and you really need to do it. And then I'll show you the live connection way of exporting data, which is at least linked to the master table. So again, that's good, right? If you really need to export the data for some other system or other process, then I'm gonna show you a few techniques. So where are we gonna go with this? Well, I'm breaking it down into five sections. So it's gonna be a little bit of a longer video than normal, but you can just have a look at the sections and jump the one that you're most interested in or watch the whole thing. So we're just gonna focus on, to start with, the Power BI desktop section, and then we're gonna run through these live exports, talking about underlying data. How do you allow people to do that? And what about paginated report? And I don't mean SSRS, I mean a nice, simple, five seconds to set up paginated report that'll just export a CSV or an Excel file. CSV if it's more than a million records, okay? All right, so let's start with Bravo. This is good if you've got a single table, so not a table visual, I mean a table of data in your data model that you wanna export. So you can go and download Bravo BI. Okay, I've got it here installed. Links in the description, always check out the links. Okay, in the descriptions. So click on Bravo. And I've got a 3.6 million row table here. I can go into Bravo and export data. Really simple. Okay, here's my table called CSVs and I can export it as a CSV file, different encoding and different bits and pieces in here. I'd probably just go with the default and say export selected. And that will export a 3.6 million row CSV file. Okay, so that's if you've got a table in your data. So not measures, not calculations, not a summary of it, not something from the report itself, an actual table. Okay, pretty cool, nice and straightforward. All right, but what if you wanna export something more like, you know, a breakdown of maybe the Bell's Beach, 181,000 records? Well, potentially from Power BI Desktop, you can go to DAX Studio. Again, links in the description. So I'll just fire this up. And it's really nice and easy to build yourself an export, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna click Query Builder and let's add uh, invoice number and maybe date. And let's say I also want the um, location code and a measure for cost, okay? So I'll just click update, and then I can click here and just go run. Because this is go gonna take a while because it's on 3.6 million records. Again, it's basically a different invoice number for every row, so it's gonna list them all. Probably should have come in and put a filter on straight away. All right, that took about a minute to run but I've got all 3.6 million records. And I could put a filter on here if I wanted to, but I could also just simply go to advanced and then I can export the data as a CSV. So there you go, there's another option. All right, so let's talk about the Power BI service. So a well-known way of connecting live is export and analyze in Excel, all right? And that will actually build you a linked, refreshable pivot table that's built in Excel. Okay, so if I open this up, I can enable the content and here's my fields available to me. Okay, I can put my cost in there. 
I could put the uh, date in the rows. I could go to my invoice number and put that in the rows. But if I do that, I'm looking at 3.6 million records, so it'll just fail. Okay, so maybe I need to add a filter first. So let's go to city and apply a filter for a particular city. Let's say, let's deselect all, let's say Bondi and click OK. And then I want to list all the invoice numbers in the rows. Okay, it's going to churn through a chunk because there's, you know, quite a few thousand records here. So if I go back to have a look and open up this. So for Bondi, there were 181,000 records. Okay. So if I come back here, it's still having a think. You might want to open this on desktop and run it there. And while that's working, let's talk about another way. Okay, so that sort of gives you a, a refreshable, live linked version that you can just have, you can share that file with somebody, they can open it if they've got permission to this report. You know, you have to have shared the report and enabled them build access. So when I say that, if you share a report with someone or an app, okay, and you've given maybe specific people or people in your organization, allow people to build if you want them to refresh themselves that linked Excel file, okay? Right, let's go back, hold on, just, okay, so here's the Excel file. To be honest, I'd open it in desktop and reformat this. Um, there's probably some options under here for, for changing it, but you get the idea. It's then a refreshable report, okay? Awesome. Okay, if you don't want to export the whole report, then you can just export a visual. All right, so here we go. We can go ex export data. And the data with the current layout gives you a sort of slightly formatted version of that visible table. Summarized data actually connects live, okay, up to half a million rows. And this one we can play about with. We'll come back to this one in a second. And then underlying data, that's normally grayed out, but gives you the granular row by row detail that makes up those numbers. That might be what you're after. Okay, that's normally grayed out. So you turn that on by going into Power BI Desktop, File, Options and Settings. Okay, and then under Report, you go down to Report Settings. Report Settings. And it's this one, allow end users to export data. Okay, if you don't want them to, go for that one. By default, your Power BI reports are set to only summarized. This option, underlying data as well, okay. All right, so here we go. I'm actually gonna come back here a second and say, right, I'm only interested in Bell's Beach. So I'm clicking on Bell's Beach, that's 181,000 records. So I go here, I go export data, underlying data, and I click export without glancing at this. 150,000 row max, okay? And this, I think, is a bit of a, a shame. I think the process should stop. If you've got more than 150,000 records, I don't think it should allow you to export because you might miss this. People might miss this and make mistakes. So check this out. So here we are in our table. And I'm just going to go to the bottom by going table design total row. And look, it chops off at 150, record 150,000. Okay, so this cost, if I added this cost up, make that column a bit wider, 801,000, which was not the right number. It's chopped it off. Okay, so if you've got less than 150,000, then that option is potentially a good one, but this isn't live. It's a one-off export, okay? So a bit of an issue there. 
However, if we go here and we go to export data, summarize data, okay, 500,000 rows, all right, but only the summarized data, but we're going to hack it. All right, check this out. We go export. All right, so it's one row. Well, what good's that? Well, one, it's, it's live, which is the thing we need. And then if you right click on this and you go to table and edit query, I'll show you a better box in a second, but edit query, just to see this. Here's some DAX query code, okay, that's actually grabbing you the data here. There is actually a nicer box, I'll come, come back to that. So what I can do is create a live table connection to my data rather than a pivot table, because you might want your data in a table format that's refreshable. And if you've got less than um, you know a million rows, Excel can connect to this and, and do this. So how do I edit that code? Well, this is where something like DAX Studio can come in handy, or even the query view, um, the new DAX query view in Power BI Desktop. So if I go into Power BI Desktop, now I'd probably do this in DAX Studio because you, you, you might get some better code or you, you can build the, the query a bit easier. But if I go into a new page and just I've built a little table here. This is what I want it to look like. Okay, I've got invoice number and city and date. All right, and I've done a filter for Bells Beach. All right, just done a, a filter on here for Bells Beach. And I turned off the total rows because I didn't really want the total rows as part of the export. So here we go, all right? I go to optimize and I turn performance analyzer on. I start recording. I refresh the visuals and I stop. And then if I open this up, I can copy this query, okay? But check this out. If I run in DAX query view, it builds me the query. However, okay, it does a top N, the top 500. Because when that table's rendering, it's only rendering the first 500 rows and then you scroll down, it sends another query. I don't want that bit, okay? So I'm going to get rid of that bit. And I actually just want this then. Okay, copy, paste. That's the bit I want to evaluate and then it's ordering it by in a certain order. And it's doing a filter as for Bell's Beach. So then if I run this, oops, what have I missed here? Uh, oh, I value, I don't want var DS core. There we go, just want DS core. All right, run that. This is now going to create that entire list of records, okay? Down here, 181,988 rows. So if I copy this query, control C, I go back into the linked Excel file, right click, table. Remember I clicked edit query? Well, the box is very small and not very nice. So another way of getting into that box is external data properties. And then weirdly, this little icon, and then definition. And this is a resizable box. Okay, so you can actually drag this down to give you some more real estate. And you just highlight with whatever's in there, get rid of it, and then paste your new query in. And then click OK, and OK again. And then off it goes live and builds you what you need, which is pretty cool. So this is live and refreshable, okay? This filter is in the code. You can't refer to it in a cell. I get that question. I've heard that question a lot in the past. Um, I'll put a link to a video by Marco Russo who wrote some VBA to actually populate that. Um, Marco admits he's not the best at VBA, um, and there's probably some neater code. You can chat GPT it to, just to update, you know, allow somebody to put a cell and pick a, pick a value, and it populates the back-end query. Okay, so that's another way. And then the last way I want to show you, okay, if you want to build something that's sort of built into Power BI that somebody can export, 
then the new paginated, relatively new, paginated report is the option. Okay, so check this out. If you go to your semantic model and you click on the three dots and you say create paginated report, so check this out. We could say, right, I want to do um, from my CSVs, I'd like the invoice number and then date. And I'll add the location code and the cost. Now, by default, it sums the invoice number, which I don't want it to do. So, oops, sorry, I'm going to click on the drop down. Don't summarize. And if you're adding multiple columns, I definitely recommend going view because look, cost hasn't shown, but it doesn't tell you it's missing, which I don't like about this. Go for web layout. And then you'll see. Okay, and then you can add filters, All right? So I might want to add a filter for city. And from the city drop down, I am going to pick uh, Bell's Beach. Now, unfortunately, this filter panel is not available for the end user to change. So maybe there'll be a future version when that is a parameter and the end user can change it. But from here, okay, you can then go to the Home tab and you can export as a CSV. Now I tested this, it does take quite a while to export a 2 million row CSV, okay? But you can also save this report. So you can go File, Save. So which workspace do you want to save it to? Let's call this YouTube Export. All right, I'll put a double zero at the start just to make it pop to the top of my list. And go Save. And then in my YouTube workspace, I've got my paginated report there, which I can click on whenever I want, and then run the export. Okay. Each time you open it, it's going to take a while to run. Remember, there are 183,000 records. If you're doing a million, this loading of this takes a while. I think as well, if you're running this on premium capacity, um, like shared capacity, this could chew up a lot of resources. So just be aware of that as well. I don't know, I've not tested it, but I've heard people saying that these sorts of things can, can chew through resources. Might be wrong. I'm just saying, look into it if you are using those. I'm not using those services, so I don't know. Check out the description. If somebody leaves a comment about that, I'll put those in there. Always read the description of my videos because I add people's comments in there if somebody makes a valid point. Okay, that's something I wasn't aware of. So here we go, export. And you can just pick one of these options. Excel, this is a one-off, it's not live, it's not linked, but it's another option, okay? So there we go. A few different ways, a few different options, okay? Straight from desktop, or two or three different ways in the cloud. Analyzing Excel is linked, the linked table trick. I like that method, okay? You can also build that query in DAX Studio, so remember, if, if I bring back DAX Studio up, this query, you could copy that into the Excel file, just the same way I used the Optimize, oh, sorry, Optimizer in Power BI Desktop. You could build that query yourself. So there's a couple of different ways of doing this, all right? So I hope you find that useful. Um, let me know what you think. Were any of those methods new to you? Is there another method that I missed or what's your experience of using these ones? I'm keen to find out as well. So I'll catch you in the next video.